When Heath Ledger played the Joker in The Dark Knight, he had such menace and mystery, we couldn't take our eyes off him. We were almost spellbound. His performance and his look is also probably why the criminals of Gotham had no idea that when he asked them if they wanted to see a magic trick, that it would be so serious. Or would it be? Here is the scene in question. In it, the Joker stabs a pencil into a table and then slams some bad guy's face into said pencil. It's a kind of rapid violence that shocks and awes, but would the injury be as serious as it looked? Is the Joker's famous magic trick deadly, as the movie implies, or just debilitating? First, where did the pencil actually go in that scene? The Joker takes it for the magic trick, slams it down into the table, pointy side down, eraser side up. Now, even if you take this scene frame by frame, it's hard to tell what's happening, so let's do it ourselves. When head meets pencil, where is the most likely place the pencil is gonna go? The pencil is gonna have to enter the skull in such a way that it can get through the skull first and then completely embed itself. Well, the pencil's entry point is definitely gonna be somewhere in the face, but where? In a previous episode about attacking zombie brains, we determined it's probably not gonna be the forehead or frontal bones because it can take upwards of 540 newtons just to get through those bones, and that would probably end up just breaking the pencil anyway. No, I think a much more likely option would be where we are assuming the pencil is going in the movie, right through the eye, right through the eye socket, through the orbitals of the skull, the bones behind the eye. I think this is a much more likely option because this is where some of the skull's thinnest bones are. They are just as thick as a playing card. When an object penetrates the bones behind the eye and makes it into the brain, doctors call it a transorbital intracranial penetrating injury, or TIPI. It is a very rare injury, but it does happen. In the film, it definitely looks like the mob's unfortunate muscle guy suffers a TIPI at the hands of the Joker, and there is enough space in the brain case horizontally here for a pencil, if it goes through the orbitals, to completely embed itself, around 15 centimeters. Pat. You know, Batman v Superman wasn't that bad. What? The TIPI is a rare injury, but we have recorded enough cases to know that the Joker's magic trick is at least physically possible. But what about with pencils? The following is a list of objects that have pierced through the backs of people's orbitals and made it into their brains in documented medical cases. Okay, this all sounds bad. Here we go. A paintbrush. Oh, uh, fishing rod, glass rod, wire, a theater sword. Whoa, a golf tee. Ouch, a screwdriver. Okay, a scissors. Oh, chopsticks, how? A ski pole, okay, a kangaroo's Tooth, there, there it is. A spout of an oil can. Whoa, that's a bad mechanic. Uh, handle of a water faucet, coat hook, toothbrush, tent pole, top of a soft drink bottle, gardening cane, door key, a needle fish. How are you gonna needle fish in your face? And pencils. It's happened before. The earliest recorded pencil injury that fits with what the Joker's magic trick does was documented all the way back in 1848. And since then, as more and more cases have been documented, a weird trend emerged. Thanks, Alfred. It's a readout from the back pewter. Alfred printed it for me. <laughs> a summary of 40 pencil TIPI cases by MTA Dwinen and colleagues, you can find this study in the show notes, found that the overwhelming majority of patients were under 10 years old male and pierce their right orbitals with the pencil. Now the authors speculate that these numbers come from the fact that young boys, right hand dominant on average, don't brace themselves for falls like adults do, instead holding on to pencils as they fell in these cases. 80% of injuries in their study happened this way. Your mom was right kids, don't run with pointy stuff. But maybe the weirdest part of pencil TIPIs is how the injury looks. From the outside, if you were unfortunate enough to fall on something like a pencil and have it go through your eye, you may just see a red dot and some swelling on one of the eyelids. But on the inside, you'd see many centimeters of object inside your brain moving through your frontal lobes and towards your brainstem. For example, I'm about to show you some real medical photos. The study's in the show notes, and they're not gory, I promise. But you will see a guy's eye. 
it's not gory. Okay, okay. This guy unfortunately fell on some chopsticks while he was eating. And when he woke up, this is all he saw, just a red dot and some swelling. He did not think anything was wrong, aside from, you know, the red dot. But when he got a CT scan, yeah, a little bit worse on the inside. This guy was fine. My point is that the lack of outwardly gore from pencil TIPIs fits with what we see in the movie. So there is enough space and a pathway through a henchman's skull such that a pencil could fully embed itself, there is little outward sign of injury, and we have recorded many pencil TIPI cases. It all fits with the trick. So how serious is it? Doctors and researchers call the relative risk of death from a certain condition or injury in a population mortality. And the same review we've been looking at by MTA Dwight Sorry. And the same review we've been looking at by MTA Dwinan and colleagues, again, in the show notes, found that the overall mortality across 129 TIPI cases since 1977 is just 13%. But mortality wasn't always this low. When the first cases were recorded back in the 1800s, that rate was near 100% because of the high risk of infection you have when something is pushing into your brain. But when treatments got better, this rate started to drop significantly. At the turn of the century, doctors stopped taking the just take it out and wait and see what happens approach. And that Batman v Superman was bad. And then antibiotics were introduced. It was on my utility belt. By 1980, antibiotics had made something that was a death sentence something survivable. Today, with modern treatment, the vast majority of people with TIPIs have full neurological recovery, which means, I can't find my grapple, which means, I'll take the car, which means, Alfred! Which means, if treated, the Joker's magic trick isn't all that deadly. But we've been talking about pencils. You know what you really have to worry about? Umbrellas. In the same review that we've been looking at over 20 years of cases of everyone who has died from a TIPI, over 50% of those people died from having an umbrella puncture their face. And not from a fall, either. From a so-called aggressive action. The doctors even call this a lethal weapon. I guess Cobblepot was onto something. Is it on my eye? It is. All of this is to say that no, the Joker's magic pencil trick isn't that serious. It would knock you unconscious probably, it would hurt like heck, yeah, but based on the cases that we've studied, the overall mortality rate for pencil-based TIPIs is very low and is eclipsed by other objects like the deadly umbrella. And it's survivable and you can recover from it, but that's only with treatment. If the mob's henchman was never taken to a hospital, then with the high rate of infection that comes with these injuries, that would be no laughing matter. Because science. Ah, 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 I'm Jared Leto. Do you know where you really failed, Bruce? It's in thinking that instead of putting billions of dollars towards after school programs and the homelessness problem and socioeconomic challenges that Gotham faces, you decided to just put on a cape and punch me in the face. That is a terrible waste of resources. And... Thank you so much for watching, Stephanie. Check out Busquatch, the space program. Sign up at projectalpha.com to get that show and this show two days earlier than anyone else. Follow me at these social media handles because cool stuff happens. Bye.